These results show an increase in underlying profits before tax and earnings per share, and yet your net asset value is down. What's your take on these results? Well, I think there are a few key themes coming out of the announcement today. Uh, firstly, operationally, I think we've delivered a pretty good performance. As you say, earnings were up uh, 5% over the period. Uh, secondly, we've made a very encouraging start to the strategic reshaping of the portfolio that we announced back in November. Um, we have taken some NEV write down, in, particularly in connection with the large non-strategic assets, including the Neckerman site, which I think is really a reflection of the very illiquid nature of the market for these types of asset at this particular point in time. But the good news is that our core portfolio is performing well, both operationally and in terms of capital value uh, performance. And the core now represents 81% of the total of the portfolio, which I think bodes well for the future. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with the progress we're making, and I think we're well on track towards our goal of becoming a leading income-focused REIT. Turning to the numbers in more detail now, how have you performed operationally? Well, operationally, as I said, earnings are up 5% in terms of EPRA profits. Uh, in terms of what's behind that, uh, our leasing activity has been pretty solid in the first half of the year. We've signed 172 leases or, or lease renewals, at rents that are 2% above the December levels for, for last year. Uh, our retention rate, our customer retention rate, which is a key metric for us, is 63% across the whole portfolio. And in fact, it's nearly 70% in, in the core of our portfolio. And importantly, the underlying like-for-like -like net rental income on the existing assets is up 1%. So leasing activity has been pretty good. The development programme is, is going really well. We've completed seven projects in the period. We've signed up another seven uh, pre-leasing agreements uh, to start in the second half of the year and beyond. Uh, and we now have 20 projects under development, which are really going to produce some, some very attractive returns for us going forwards. Our cost base is, uh, is moving in the right direction. Our administration expenses are down 17%. And in the first half of the year, we've also benefited in terms of lower finance costs due to the low interest rate environment. So operationally, I think we're doing, we're doing pretty well. And as I say, uh, underlying earnings up 5% is a pretty good result for us particularly bearing in mind the difficult economic environment and bearing in mind the fact that we sold quite a number of income-producing properties in the first half of the year. You announced a new strategy last November. What progress are you making with this? Well, as I said earlier, I think we've made some pretty good early progress in the portfolio reshaping exercise. We've sold just over £500 million of assets in the year to date, including the disposal of 10 UK estates that we announced this morning for £111 million. And that takes us right to the top, in fact, even slightly above the top end of the, the guidance range we gave of 300 to 500 million pounds of disposals uh, for, the, for the whole year. So we're doing pretty well in terms of the disposal programme. In fact, we're ahead of where I thought we would be at this point in the, in the process. Uh, but we've also been very successful in recycling some of the sales proceeds generated into attractive reinvestment opportunities, in particular both in the form of the development programme that I referred to earlier, but also we've made a couple of very good acquisitions, one in the UK and one in continental Europe. So overall I think we're in good shape in terms of the progress we're making on the reshaping exercise. As you said earlier, you've had two new acquisitions in the last few months. How important are these to your future plans? Well, yes, we've made two acquisitions, uh, both of them of logistics portfolios. Firstly, in the UK, we completed the acquisition um, of the UK Logistics Fund in partnership with Moorfield uh, in February. Uh, that's given us access to a very good roster of tenants located in 14 prime quality logistics assets in the markets we want, we want to operate in. So a very good first step in, in the UK. We followed that with an announcement just last month of a deal we've agreed with Foncier de Région in, in France to buy 13 prime logistics assets, mostly in and around Paris and Lyon, which are in very important logistics markets in, in, in France. And together, they're going to give us a very good uh, foothold into, into the logistics um, market that, that we're really trying to grow. And this was one of our key areas for growth that we identified at the time of the November strategy announcement. So I think it's further evidence that we're getting on with the reshaping exercise that we said we were going to undertake. You were talking about asset disposals in the UK a bit earlier, but what about asset disposals in continental Europe? How are they going? Well, we always said this was a disposal program that was going to take a number of years to complete. And frankly, we're ahead of where we thought we would be at this point in, in the process. To date, our focus has been predominantly on the UK. And that's been by design because we were able to identify a number of 
packages of assets that we wanted to sell and match those with the investor appetite that we'd identified. But you're right, going forwards, our focus will, will switch now much more towards continental Europe. Uh, but having said that, some of the large and encore assets in particular uh, have opportunities or present opportunities to add value. And therefore, I think it could be some time before we fully trade our way out of those assets. There's no need in our view to be conducting a fire sale of these because they do represent an, an opportunity to grow value. We've already talked about your NAV being down, but do you expect that to be a continuing theme? Well, I think investment demand for prime quality, well-located assets is, is going to remain very strong, and there's certainly evidence in the marketplace that, that that's the case. Uh, on the other hand, uh, investment volumes in the secondary end of the market and, and indeed the tertiary end, I think are, are lower and will continue to weaken, and that may well have an impact on the values of secondary assets over the, the balance of this year. I think the good news from our perspective is that 80% of our portfolio is the best quality stuff, it's in the right locations, it's, it's the core part of our portfolio. And I think the prospects for that part of the portfolio in particular are pretty good and I expect it to remain very resilient. Your biggest customer has gone bust since the end of the period. How big a loss is that for you and are there any other customers that you're worried about? Well, Neckerman is a, is a big loss for us. It was a customer, it was our largest customer in fact paying us nearly £12 million a year of rent and uh, having gone into insolvency our, our working assumption is that they won't be paying that going forwards. We do have a rental guarantee in place that should cover us for the balance of this year but it's unlikely uh, in, in early 2013 we'll be able to replace that lost income um, certainly with any, with any speed. So it is a big loss. More generally across the portfolio, we've had a very good long-term record of uh, insolvency losses. In fact, our average uh, loss of rent per annum is about 1%, just over 1% on a long-term basis. And the reason for that is that we have a very diversified portfolio across a range of different customers and industries, and we don't have a lot of concentration in any particular name apart from, from, uh, from Neckerman. So I think overall we, we do feel that, uh, you know, clearly Neckerman's a big loss, but we feel the portfolio is pretty resilient, diversified risk. We don't think there's another Neckerman situation brewing in our portfolio. So what are your expectations for the rest of the year as you look ahead now? Well, I think the difficult macroeconomic backdrop is, is going to continue and that, and that has definitely had the impact of dampening consumer and business uh, confidence, which for us has translated into deals getting done, but deals happening at a much slower pace and it's generally taking much longer to get people to commit than, than was the case uh, two or three years ago. But um, the good news, as I alluded to earlier, is that 80% of our portfolio is, is in the right markets. It's the more modern kit. Uh, it's in areas where there is limited supply and limited choice available to customers that do want to take on new, new space. So I feel pretty optimistic about the prospects, particularly for our core portfolio going forwards.